You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. They're using old Android boxes and that <laughs> there is no difference with this version. But what are we going to get? We're also going to do Wicked Nerdy Time with talking about the specifications. Inside, we're going to get another box with a ex very extended toilet paper deluxe metal with a very nice glossy paper. And of course, we're going to get the controllers. So the controllers, they are trying to improve it. I did talk with the guys more like, oh man, just change out these chemical controllers. So first of all, let's do the smelly test. It still smells chemical, more like burning plastic, but yeah, it's better than the previous model. It's still the fake controllers. The feel is not like an original one. The joysticks feel okay. On and off switch over here. And then there are of course the batteries inside. And no, they're not included. I already put them in because I tested it before I was making the video. I'm always having trouble getting this thing back. Oh, that feels way better. Both of the controls will come with a single dongle. And the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes you're having like two controls on one dongle. Ooh. What are we going to get here? Hmm. Ah, we're going to get the toilet paper manual for the controller, how it works. Yep. I think nobody will read it, so let's put it back in there. But let's take a close look at... No, not the box. Let's first check the manual itself, because here you can see like they are printing these nice manuals. And I must say that the glossy toilet paper manuals are getting really good. All the information you need to, how to set up the system, if you have any problems whatsoever, they even include Super Consoles X Cube. So this is not like a manual that they're reusing for every single system they're releasing. No, it's just like a completely new print. Inside we're going to get HDMI. We're also going to get a power supply. Couldn't get it back in the box. Then we're having the system itself. And the system itself is quite interesting. So they call it the Super X Cube. I'm more like... I don't know, I don't know what think about, but I think this is not a cube. This is more like an NES clone version. But I like the model. But the question also remains, what are we going to find in the inside? We're going to do a teardown, but let's take a close look at the back over here. We're going to get an AV out, so I'm curious if this thing even works. Then having the CF input slot, and here we're going to get a 256 gigabyte with this version. Uh, let's see, it's a brandless version again. They're also doing this. When you leave it out, it will boot up, by the way, in Android. But let's take a close look at the Android so far. Okay, I must say that when booting up, you're going to get this very strange modified Android version. And there is nothing to do with it. So it's just Android that they are using. But besides that, there's nothing you can do with it. Because even if you're looking at the menu itself, you will see that there is nothing to see here. Because it's all in a weird modified Android. So Android just wanted to show you, but forget about it. Okay, here we have the HDMI out. We even have an RG45 Ethernet connection input for the power supply 12 volt and the on and off switch also very rare because not all of these things have a freaking on and off switch all right so let's take a close look at the specification because it's wicked nerdy time and i can say it's very similar to the previous models and the biggest bummer is that it isn't one gigabyte model because we need some more power but also more some ram if you want to install some new edition of mu alec but on overall, specifications are promising enough to run some low-end stuff, but for the high-end stuff, it's not going to be enough. So, and that's that reason why we're going to test it out. Before we're going to power it on, let's plug in the dongle itself for controller number one. We can't close it. Then we're going to turn the system on. I wish like you used the on and off switch at the front. Yeah, okay, this is the thing what we're going to get. So within a couple of minutes, the device itself has been booted up. It depends, of course, what kind of version you're having. The control is already set up for me. So the only thing I need to do is like powering on. And of course, what I've shown you, plug in the device itself. In this case, my wireless PlayStation 2 controller. But if you're just tuning in, I have no idea what is this device all about. So basically what they're doing, they're grabbing old, really old Android tech, like the device is normally going into the garbage pile for e-waste, but they are just reusing this stuff. And they are doing some modification with making a custom name and slapping some MUL. -like. The software they just, I think they grab it from the internet. You can just, by the way, get yourself MUL -like because it's just free to download. Get yourself an Android box and do the same thing for less money. Take that in consideration. But overall, like, I'm curious what kind of performance we're going to get because this is still a very old, a low power device. So don't expect a lot of performance. But let's test it out. You can play a lot of old games, let's say up to the 16-bit era without any problems. So that is what we're not going to test out. 
because in my opinion it's just a waste of time we're going to try the high-end stuff like think about playstation 1 playstation portable stuff like that how will it run on the super console x cube the cube but there's actually not a cube first let's try a thomas wave it's a very demanding emulator and the performance itself is okay i did see and hear a lot of hiccups oh and a lot of glitches oh i can hear it frame drops maximum level I did notice like some of these boxes will run it better, but then we're going to need a better and newer emu elec. And this device is just low powered. Including when it comes to the gigabyte of RAMs and stuff like that. So this is just the best performance we're going to get for this box and this emu elec edition. Okay, so first I want to try Sega Dreamcast. It's running on the Reincast emulator if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Because of the Mali, you will see, and I mean with the Mali GP, you will see some glitches. Some stages will run just perfect. Music is great. But what I noticed, like this control I'm using now, works way better. But even the Super Move, I don't see any hiccup. So I'm gonna say the performance and overall, besides some minor glitches, hmm, it's surprisingly running pretty good. So N64 will always be a mix bag with these low end stuff and in combination with MLA 3.9 I think the emulation is just what it is But some games are just playable beside all the glitches and slowdowns Howdy partner Love this game, I've played it as a child so much the sounds like alone are so freaking awesome. Path cleared. Here it comes. Like with N64, we had so many issues. Mixed bag, what I like to call it. But with PlayStation Portable, it's of course the same story because it's a really demanding system. But again, some games are just playable. G Darius runs on full speed so even despite the low power and the old emmy alec we can still play a lot of cool playstation portable games but again it's a gamble So I really want to know what's inside. So the only thing that we need to do is removing the four rubbery feet. And then we can basically unscrew the four parkers. Oh man. And when we open it up, I am really curious what to find on the inside. Because with the normal version and the Pro, basically we're going to get the same old Android box with this. All right, so let's remove the four screws. So is it the same mainboard inside this than all the other models or is it something different? Ah, so this is what he meant like with the special hub. So this is a little bit of a bummer, so I need to be careful. So this piece B that contains the four USB connections is soldering straight onto the mainboard. There is not a plug or whatsoever. Oh, here we're going to get the three LEDs over here with some plastics. And then we're going to get over here the flash chip of the main board itself then we're going to get here the two ram chips and underneath let's see if i can remove it oh that went very easily we're going to get the chip itself so let's see if we can check it out this is the s905 m b oh, it's very hard to film because it's very difficult to show you but you just need to believe what I'm saying. We're going to get here the Realtek Wi-Fi chip, the very tiny antenna, on-off switch and all the other connections. 